Good morning, and welcome to your Welcome Home Ceremony. I'm Tim Shepard, and it's my pleasure to serve as your MC. This morning, you'll hear from three distinguished gentlemen who will all welcome you home. Without further ado, I'm pleased to welcome Governor Mark Gordon to the podium. Good morning and welcome home. It's truly an honor to serve as governor of Wyoming, the greatest state in the greatest country in the world. A state which does not forget our veterans and a state which will always be eternally grateful for all you have done to ensure that we are safe and that all this country stands for remains. Thank you and your families whose labors too often go unrecognized. I am saddened that I cannot be with you in person to celebrate this day and honor your service. Typically, we have the opportunity to travel around to different communities in the state and visit with veterans, shake their hands, and give them a proper welcome home. I look forward to that every year. Given the current health crisis though, this ceremony looks a little different this year, but it doesn't diminish the meaning and the importance of this day. Honoring the service of our veterans means so much to my family and to me. We want all of you to know how valued your service is to our state and our country. My wife, Jenny, grew up the second to youngest in a military family. Her dad was a senior master sergeant in the Air Force, having first served in the Navy and then the Army and then the Army Air Corps. She remembers well when her oldest brother, who volunteered at 17, came back from Vietnam and how disgracefully people treated him on his arrival home. Wyoming won't forget your service. Soldiers, sailors, airmen, doctors, nurses, warriors, all. Thank you. Jenny and I are proud that members of our family are still serving. The horrific events of Vietnam veterans coming home and what they went through upon their return to the United States were simply unacceptable. That's why every year we take this opportunity to properly welcome home all veterans so no one has to go through what they went through. My friend and a great friend of veterans, Senator John Schiffer, said something at a gathering of veterans a few months before he passed away. You know, it's, it stuck with me. He volunteered for the Navy and was a river rat. River Rat saw some really awful action in Vietnam, as you know. And I remember he said to me, you know, Mark, when you were over there, you weren't fighting for ideals. You were fighting to make sure you and your fellow soldiers would come home. It struck me and it reminded me of something another cousin of mine said when he uh, talked about Vietnam, which he didn't talk about very much. His name was George Patton, and he served in Korea and Vietnam a whole bunch more than his dad, Blood and Guts, did. But in his farewell speech to the 2nd Armored Division in 1977, George said this, In each generation, as long as we are to remain a great nation, a group of us are somehow chosen, perhaps by the Almighty, to serve our country and our army and to serve the nation. When he talked about Vietnam, he remembered a certain story. And he would always start by saying, I've got to say the soldiers in Vietnam that I was associated with in my three tours were pretty much frontline troops. They were the best I'd ever seen on any battlefield. And the soldiers were up against some incredibly difficult rules of engagement. I'll tell you a story, he said. It's a good story. We had some villages to run civic action, and medical help in. My engineer company built a school. We were in the village of Binh Mai and we got some lumber to rebuild the schoolhouse. We were about two thirds of the way completed 
We had a teacher hired who was crippled. My engineer company was bringing in the supplies and an armored personnel carrier along a little road up to the schoolhouse when they hit a mine. Luckily, nobody was seriously injured. But the engineers went out there and fixed the armored personnel carrier, and they continued right on building the school. I went up to them and said, you're pretty complacent about all this. And they said, sir, that's our job. There's no way of telling who laid that mine, but it was someone who didn't want us to build that school. We knew we used that little trail, and they did too. But we just went right on. We had to make sure we never make that mistake again. We here in Wyoming are unified in our recognition of your service, far more than just recognizing our veterans at public events. We need to make sure that we thank you and your families every single day. We thank you for your service, for your faith in our country, for your care of your fellow soldiers, and for your remembrance of all those we have lost along the way. And to thank you for your work inspiring the youth of today to service and to look forward to an American future for all of us. Thank you. Thank you for those outstanding remarks, Governor Gordon. And now it's my pleasure to welcome the Adjutant General for Wyoming, Major General Greg Porter. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. As Governor Gordon said, we are saddened that we cannot be there personally to shake each of your hands on this day. We in uniform stand on the shoulders of giants, and we cannot thank our past generations enough for the many sacrifices you have given to ensure that our nation remains free. The experience our Vietnam veterans had upon coming home forever leaves a mark of how not to treat our returning warriors, and it is certainly not a reflection of what you deserved. That's why we dedicate today to you and all our veterans, so we learn from those past experiences, so that they stay in the past, and all our veterans receive the welcome home they deserve. In 2020, the Wyoming National Guard welcomed home nearly 400 soldiers and around 200 airmen after serving in various deployments around the world. I will tell you, there is not much out there that can generate more emotion than seeing soldiers and airmen reunited with loved ones after a deployment or an extended time apart. I see families, extended families, and community members come out to these events, cheerfully welcoming me back so many, and it really puts it into perspective, the sacrifices that so many make for our country, and not just the men and women in uniform, but the families and communities all sacrifice. That support and sacrifice enables us to perform the mission we are called to do and proudly serve as a sword and shield for our state and nation. As a nation, we are better at telling those that sacrifice, thank you. But we can never take for granted that there will always be Americans willing to make that sacrifice. Each new generation makes the choice to serve. Each new generation must sign up with their lives and perhaps their blood to sacrifice for the many. But today is our day to tell you that you made a difference in our country and its future. Thank you for everything you've done. Welcome home. Great job, General Porter. And now I'd like to welcome the chairman of the Wyoming Veterans Commission, Mr. Travis Detai. Thank you, Director Shepard. Governor Gordon, General Porter, thank you for being here. It is my distinct honor to be here with you today to say welcome home. The author Joseph Campbell once said, a hero is someone who has given his or her life to something bigger than oneself. In America today, there are an estimated 1.3 million men and women on active duty defending our country in our all-volunteer fighting forces, less than one half of 1% of the population. Think about that. Less than one half of 1% of Americans today have willingly stood up and volunteered to place their life on the line every day to defend American freedom across the globe. These special people are willing to do very difficult work, often in very dark and difficult places around the world, so that the overwhelming majority of their country's citizens can live free, safe, and secure lives. 
Most of the people here today and watching understand this willingness and have joined their brothers and sisters in arms in defending our country. Joining the military isn't an easy life. Going to war is certainly not easy. And often, for too many, coming home from war is hard. As President Lincoln put it so eloquently those many years ago, as a nation, we have a duty to care for him who shall have borne the battle and for his widow and his orphan. And all of this begins with the simple but profound words, welcome home. We continue to make new veterans every day, and we continue to depend on our warriors to selflessly do the difficult work asked of them. They need to know that we will be there for them when they come home. The less than 1%, those who have put their lives on the line for something bigger than themselves, deserve nothing less. So on behalf of the Wyoming Veterans Commission, to all of our young warriors returning from today's battlefields, and to those who came back to us from battlefields past, and their families, it is my distinct honor to say, welcome home and thank you. Thanks for those excellent words, Chairman Detai. And with that, this concludes our ceremony this morning. And I would just like to say thank you so much for being here. And as everyone else has said, welcome home.